Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back. This is CS50. We are taking a look at week 1C. We are looking at the Mario Less version here, and we are going to go over that and help you guys achieve anything that you're missing. We'll show you step by step how we're doing this. Now, I do my code a little bit differently when I do my walkthroughs. First and foremost, if you're new to this, definitely look at the hints, right? Don't forget those drop downs. These extra videos in here are going to be helpful, right? So make sure I've already got mine extracted. I've already got all my stuff unzipped and I removed all the, the zip files and everything else like that. So I'm already a little bit of the way in. But what I do after that is after reading my program, reading my hints, if I have to watch the walkthrough, which is not always going to be necessary. Sometimes you'll find what you need. Um, you're going to go ahead and drop everything down. Make sure you read all of it, right? And once you have all that done, what I do is I pre-format my code. I give myself little notes and little markers. So this is what mine looks like right now. Now I already added int main void and you'll see in the notes that CS50 and Studio H from your memory, they're going to have to be imported. So we're going to have to include CS50 and Studio H. And actually one of those is notated in here. So it tells you, you know, don't forget that this is in the um, CS50 library, right? So we want to make sure that we've got that in there. So what I've done here is I've established my notes for my code for what I need to complete this code. And what we're going to go ahead now is we're going to fill that in and we're going to code that and we'll kind of walk you through step by step. So when we first do this, this is the Mario Less version, right? So uh, I haven't worked on the other version, uh, not really a need to right now. You can always go back once you've completed your coding and see if you can do the more complicated stuff. So for right now, this is the one we're going to be doing. So the first thing we need to do is establish height, row, and column. This must be a number, so we need it to be an integer, right? That's how the computer recognizes it, so it's going to be INT. Now, when I say height, throw, and column, there's not really a lot of emphasis on this, in my opinion, in the uh, lecture. So you don't have to call it height, throw, and column. You can call it apple, orange, banana, as long as you continue to call it apple, orange, banana all the way through the program. And that's really important. Now, obviously, in this case, height, throw, column, and spacing are the more appropriate things because as you go through this you're gonna recall I need height I need row I need column and I need spacing but when you've declared something so when we declare something as an integer an integer must be our height right uh, it must be our row it must be our column and it must be our spacing whoops all right so once we've done that now I could have declared those things as anything I've wanted if I referred to height as Apple as long as I used Apple each time that I called height then that would be fine the computer would recognize that because it doesn't know what things are or are supposed to be you're telling it what these things are so height row and column and the reason this is important is for kind of later programming just remember that in C once you've declared a variable that is the variable that's what the computer is going to recognize it as right so for us we're going to do height row column and spacing the next thing we'll do and you kind of saw it in the notes there's a little hint here somewhere um, it mentions a do while loop in one of these hints I think it's this one here right so do while right so it tells you hey this is declared get integers declared in CS50 so we know we need that printf function so things like that so these little hints but the do while loop is one thing that I caught on to and the do while loop is one thing that we're going to use right so let's first start off with our do what are we going to do and then we're going to put in some brackets here and what we're going to do is so we're going to establish this note wasn't in here so we need to establish the height right as a variable in number value so height as variable in number value value please thank you all right so let's we already named it height right so height is going to be get integer as again was in that little hint right there uh, so get int and now this is going to be for the program and it wanted you to say enter height and and there was a colon and a space so some of these things when you do them you can't they can't be subjective I think when I first did this I just put in height and it told me it was wrong even though the program did all the right things it just didn't say enter height so when it tells you that something needs to say something make sure it says that something because otherwise it could be wrong right all right, so now we need to establish the necessary number parameters for 1 through 8 in our while loop. So when we do our do, we want to do while, right? Make sure that's lowercase. And while the height is, 
we needed to be parameters it said it didn't want you to go below one or over eight so those are the parameters that we're going to set right so less than one or uh, height is or more than one sorry uh, less than eight and let's close that out all right so now we've established that if you put a number one it needs to be an integer so I think one of the tests when we run this is foo foo and so it wants to know that I can't type in you know letters and get some sort of response from it so we've declared that as get integer right so we know that it has to now be a number and it also said it only wanted to be one through eight blocks so now it can't be zero or less and it can't be nine or more so that's what this block here is going to be doing for you right so we've got our while loop there so let's get that out of there so now what do we need to do add new rows after the limit is established with a plus plus uh, being plus one and you need to limit your total number of rows right so this is our do while now we need our four right so four and this is going to be row is equal to zero and the row is less than the height row plus plus now Typing that out now is kind of like more simple to read as you as you read these things and, and go forth doing them, then you'll understand them more. But what that's saying is that when there are rows that are less than the height, and let's format that a little bit better actually. Sorry, I didn't see that. When the row is less than the height, so there's less rows than there is high, we want to add a row, right? So when the height goes up, we add a row. When it's one, there's one row. When it's two, there's two rows, etc. So this is the parameter that helps establish that. So again, adding new rows after the limit is established with a plus plus function, but we need to limit the total number of rows, which is what we've done. So we are going to open a parenthesis here to teach it the math um, because the computer doesn't know how to do that. So for our spacing, we have to tell it what it's going to be, right? So let's move these two out and put our um, math for that in here, which you can see I've already programmed in here, right? So when the number of spaces is less than the number of rows minus one, because we don't want to have an extra like blank line there, then we add one, right? So let's kind of type that out and see if we can explain why we're going so for when the spacing is equal to zero we're gonna have and the, and the spacing is less than the height minus the rows minus one because having when we have just one row that's we need to have like zero right then spacing plus plus and why am I calling it spacing? Okay, so spacing is, this is, um, you'll see the line uh, that's two up. So the line that's right here, give me a second. So this line right here. So it's telling me that the spacing for my program here means that this is how we're going to align it to the right. So if we don't add the proper spacings, moving the hashtags or pound symbols or octothorps over, right? If we don't have the spacing for that, moving them to the right, then we're going to have a pyramid that, that lines up in the wrong direction. So we add the spacing that puts one space to every hashtag that's above it. And then if there's two rows, it moves that over two. And if there's three rows, it moves that top one over three and so on and so forth. So this is the math that tells the program to do that. And that's why it's really important. Otherwise, you're going to have a uh, right aligned, uh, uh, improperly aligned pyramid, right? So when we have the spacing, what do we have to mid we have to do? We actually have to have it print F and print a space there. So the spacing is actually what's, it's actually a space, that's why it's blank there, So, but put in between the quotes, the computer recognizes it as a space because it's seeing it as text, right? So that's what's going to go in there, right? Okay. So, and under the for loop, right, um, now we have to have the column group is here, so the number of columns, so the number of columns uh, is related to the number of rows, not vice versa, right? So we need to tell it that we need to have as many columns as we have rows. Because each time we add a row, we should be adding a column. And each time we add that, we should be adding our hash symbol in there, okay? So let's do our for loop for that, right? So for, oops, 
Sorry about that. None of this is relevant right there. Sorry, we'll get to that later. All right, so for our, what are we on here? Column, right? So for column, make sure you spell that right, because again, your computer recognizes it as the text that you input, nothing else. So for column, when the column is less than or equal to the row, column plus plus. And we'll do a printf function on this. So for, let's do that. And we're going to do printf. And we're going to be printing out the hash symbol for each one of those that comes up. And that is supposed to be here. So my apologies. So let me move this out. And that's actually going to go here. So this is just the symbol. When it says this, it should, should say something like this. This is just the symbol being used to create the pyramid. And luckily in notes, spelling doesn't matter, but you know, maybe for the next guy it will. All right, so close that out. Now, the final thing we need to do here, I uh, need to make sure that we don't forget to create a new line. So we want to make sure that when we are printing these hash symbols, that, that they're going down to new lines, right? So we need to complete it out with that, right? So we're going to do printf, and you guys remember from the teaching, slash n for a new line, and we'll close that out. And then let's close this for loop here, and let's close the whole thing out. Move that one back, and I'm missing a curly brace here, so let's find out where. So we have our first for loop here. Obviously, it's not this top one. So we have our for loop, right? So after row, we're beginning that, print f. And it should be after this one here. I don't know how that went away. But why is it saying? should be the right curly brace for that but it is not happy with something that I've done missing a quote there perhaps that's it print F good good everybody happy all right close that out all right that matches the top one there all right and let's go in and make Mario yep missing out to the height that's my fault there should be that there whoops not there all right so let's make Mario again simple things that you guys will continue to make everyone will continue to make um, but luckily there's going to be things that help call us out on that. So dot slash Mario. Let's see if this runs. And let's just run five. Boom. All right, so we have five. So now let's, let's just make sure that we can't do the wrong things, right? I think that's going to be one of the tests. I think zero is going to be a test. What if we do nine? Is that a test? What if we do three? All right, so it looks like everything's working. So the next thing you want to do, I don't know what it's going to say about mine. So let's just check it. Let's go ahead and see if we are styling here. So copy this go into your code space just left click here it'll drop it in and see what it says about the style see how it wants you to move things the style is important right so okay so it's got things that let's see so green is it wants me to insert a new line okay fine red means it wants me to remove a line so go back through there and style that right so I'll I'll update this a little bit later it's not something we need to keep in the the video here but let's actually run the check minus the style issues, which are very easy to fix by adding and removing spaces. So let's get rid of that. And let's run our check CS50 and see how we did. Sorry.
fire for the way, guys. If I could make it go faster, I would. <laughs> Goodness me. My apologies. All right, there we go. So as you see, that lines up right. There was a test for foo, so I did remember that. Um, so this code is right. All right, so make sure your guys' notes are in there. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, uh, go ahead and feel free to drop them in the comments. Always, as always, like and subscribe. So if there's anything you guys need, I'm going to be posting about one to two videos a week here to get us through CS50 and be as helpful as I can. It's a little bit harder when you go online. It says, hey, if, you know, use a partner or two to get this project done, and we don't always have those available to us. So that takes care of the first one, minus the style issues. So get back in there and fix the style issues if you have any, because that will count towards your grade. In any event, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section, and I'd be happy to help you guys out. All right, thanks a lot.